two Canyon Arrows, same size, same geometry, different specifications. Do they feel the same? No, no, they really don't. Why? I don't know. Does it matter? Yes, yes it does. It's been bugging the hell out of me, so I want to find out why. And I suspect, because this is more important than we might realize. Why though? Why is it important? Well, because so often we get told that a certain bike feels a certain way, like it's responsive or it's stiff or it's harsh. And we take that to be true, to be an absolute, because that is what a bike review has told us. This bike is stiff and light and fast, but I don't like the handlebar tape, so it gets four stars. No, the bar tape's fine. It's good, okay? But is it true, though, that a bike feels a certain way because it's hardwired into its DNA? Or is the feel of a bike actually a result of the sum of its component parts and how you set them up, plus your own body dimensions as well? I want to get to the bottom of this, partly to satisfy my own curiosity, but also to see whether or not we can learn something that will help us choose upgrades to our bikes a little bit more wisely so that we can optimize them for how we want them to feel. So here are our two bikes to my left. I have a Canyon Aeroad CFR. This was the bike that we were sent when Shimano launched their latest Dura Ace group set when it went 12 speed and wireless. And I think you can agree, this is an absolute weapon of a bike, apart from that GoPro mount that Mark Threlfall from GTN has stuck on the stem. Then when SRAM launched their latest force access group set, well, we got sent another one. Clearly the gods were smiling on us that day. Yes, I do know how lucky we are. And yes, I do continually thank my lucky stars. So anyway, we've got two bikes. Both are Canyon Aeroads. Both are the same size. They're set up in exactly the same way for me, but yet they feel really different. Not like gravel bike versus road bike level of difference, but when you ride them, they've got really distinct personalities. This one is very direct. You very much feel in contact with the road. You know exactly what's going on underneath your tires. It's fast and it's exhilarating. This one, however, feels smooth rather than direct. It possibly floats down the road and that smoothness makes it feel almost kind of playful. I really enjoy it. I'm not saying one is better than the other. It's all down to personal preference. What I want to know though, is just why they're so different. And perhaps more importantly, can you translate the personality from one and put it into the other, like a transplant? So we're gonna try, swap some components out to see whether or not we can get to the bottom of why they feel so different. First though, what are the differences then? Well, clearly one has Shimano, one has SRAM, but I think we can discount that for this video because while group sets do influence the feel of your bike, it's only when you're changing gear and perhaps the brake hoods. But what we can say is gonna influence the bike, I think, are the wheel choices. One here, I've got Shimano C50s. Here, I've got Zip 404 Firecrests. Both are now set up tubeless with 28 millimeter wide Pirelli tires on there. Then what else? Well, this saddle has carbon rails. That one has alloy rails, which might sound like a really insignificant difference, but it's one that I've been convinced for years has an effect today I'm gonna find out. And then finally, there's the frames themselves. Yes, both are Canyon Aeroads. Externally, both are the same, but this one, as mentioned, is the CFR model. This one is one tier down. It's the CF SLX model. So internally, they have different types of carbon fiber and different layups as well. So potentially, if that is the reason why the bikes feel different, then it is literally baked into their DNA. It will affect the weight, does it affect the feel too? 
Oh, and that one's black and that one's like kind of bluey purple. Potentially that is going to influence it as well. I'm not going to discount it. Which one do we change then? Do we go and make the black one smoother or the blue one more direct? I think black one. Before I start swapping anything out though, I just need to make sure I'm fully reacquainted with this bike and how it feels. And so to help get an extra sense of those sensations, I'm actually going to ride it with my eyes shut for a little bit. That's not a good idea today. What do you mean it's not a good idea? It's absolutely fine. Oh, it's road bumpy, isn't it? Now, I should also point out as well that there has already been one modification to this bike from how I normally have it. And that is that I've been running Shimano's deeper C60 wheels with clincher tires as well. But I've gone for C50s with tubeless today because that's one variable I can't easily change out on the road. But I don't think it's made a huge difference. But I want to stick the zips in now to see whether we can start to really try and transplant one personality from one bike to the next. Let's swap out these wheels then. Component gods, forgive me. I am going to attempt to run a 12-speed SRAM cassette on Shimano Duros. Ah, oh, it works. I don't even have to redo the calipers. What are the bloody chances of that? Pretty slim. Right, come on in, let's go bicycling. I'm a few minutes into this second setup, and I've got to say, there has been a noticeable difference. So it's not a huge transformation, but definitely over road bars and over sort of like potholes and so forth, this bike just feels now a little bit more muted. Like there's a certain extra degree of give in it. But this is where things get difficult because I know that when Zip launched their latest Firecrest wheels, they were talking about how they'd engineered compliance into them. And so I can't honestly tell you that I'm discounting that from my sensations, not because I'm biased, but simply because once someone's told you something, you sort of look out for it. So really, I'd need a blind test, but it does, it does honestly feel like the bike has got some of the personality of the blue one now, translated onto this. But actually there's another reason as well. It's not necessarily just about the carbon layer of the wheels. There's something perhaps more fundamental at play. Right then, let's talk about rim width. No sniggering at the back. This is important, okay? So, as I said, these bikes are both running the same width of tyres. So Pirelli, P0 race TLR tyres, both set up tubeless. But one significant difference in them now is as a result of these wheels because the Zip 404s have a 23 millimetre internal rim width, whereas the Shimano's is 21 millimetres. And so what that means, therefore, is that the volume of the tyre increases. And that has a couple of other knock-on effects. The sidewall of the tyre is straighter. And so that's something that Pirelli have said affects the way the tyre responds to bumps. So it effectively makes the tyre carcass slightly stiffer, which is why you need to drop the pressure when you're running wider rims. But also it increases the surface tension of the tyre. So because there's more of it effectively, because the volume's greater, although the pressure on each part of the tyre of the pressure of the air inside is the same, because there's a greater surface area, it means that the tyre itself as a whole is effectively tighter, if you see what I mean. So what that means is that in order to 
get the tyres performing in a similar way, you actually have to run a lower pressure. So I've already done that. I've taken it into consideration. I put it into the Silka tyre pressure calculator and it recommended that on the Shimano wheels, I should be running about 71 PSI, a little bit more at the back, 74 PSI. Whereas on these, it was a lot lower. So 61 PSI at the front, 64 PSI at the back. I also cross-referenced it with the zip tire pressure calculator as well. And it came out with effectively the same numbers, give or take a PSI here or there. So potentially as well as it coming down to the carbon layup and the types of carbon used in there, could be simply as a result of the rim width. And also actually the fact that these are hookless as opposed to the hooks on the Shimano ones. According to those tire pressure calculators, that changes the pressure as well. Next, this is one of my personal weirdnesses. So I've been convinced for a long time that carbon railed saddles are stiffer and transfer more of the vibration from the road to your butt. Uh, and so I'm gonna put that to the test. This SLR, boost saddle from Celitalia has manganese rails, whereas that one has carbon rails. The reason I'm convinced about this, right, is that carbon doesn't like to be clamped, right? Or at least it needs to be engineered in order to be clamped. So there's an awful lot of force going through these rails. So I suspect that carbon is pretty blooming solid, which is why I think it can't really be engineered with much in the way of compliance from the rails. You've obviously got it from the shell, which is still super comfy, but it's, it's that bit there, I think, that makes all the difference. Well, I don't know, we'll find out, won't we? Oh my God, I've never concentrated so hard on my butt before. I'm starting to get lost in this kind of like, weird world of hypersensitivity. It's definitely not revolutionized the feel of my bike, but I just have a sneaking suspicion that were this a blind test, then yes, I might be able to feel the difference. This bike is definitely now smoother than it was with its original wheels and carbon railed saddle. And as I said, that doesn't mean it's better, it's just different. What works for one person isn't necessarily right for another. But I also think now I need to go back onto the blue bike with the Shimano wheels and a carbon railed saddle to see whether or not any hint of the difference still exists. One last run then. Well, now this has been a head if you're part of my French. So I thought that that black bike was smoother and getting more like this one, having swapped over the saddle and the wheels. But now having put the other wheels and the other saddle on the blue bike, it still feels smoother. Now this isn't a problem per se, because clearly the components have made a difference to the other bike, but it also then means, I think anyway, that the actual frame itself is still a fundamental part of the feel of the bike. So it is both components and frame. And, and again, that's kind of understandable too, because with top level frames like the CFR, often to get them super light, and super stiff. They use a different type of carbon fiber in there that changes the ride qualities. And also when there's simply less material in the frame, that too changes the feel of it. So heavier carbon frames can feel different to super lightweight ones. So there is still very much the original personality in this bike, even with different wheels, different saddle. Maybe it's the colour. You know, like, blue is like party bike, black is business bike. 
I mean, honestly, it's kind of taken me by surprise, actually. I mean, maybe it shouldn't, I guess in hindsight, to expect it to be all frame or all components. Perhaps it's a bit silly, really. Of course, it was going to be a mix of the two. But I think the amount of which the frame seems to influence things has genuinely been a bit of an eye-opener for me. Perhaps if they were different models, I'd expect it. But two Canyon Aeros simply with different carbon layups and different carbon. And it's not the kind of difference that you would ever notice unless you ride the two bikes back to back. And I'm, of course, very privileged to be in this position. But it definitely makes you think. Definitely makes me think, anyway. And it makes me think about the kind of components that perhaps we might be upgrading our bikes to and the influence that they can make. Yeah, wheels is a big one. Saddles, not such a big one. And then things that I haven't been able to change here just through logistics, tires. I know for a fact that has a huge influence on the way a bike feels. And yet, whilst there are a lot of things on bikes that you can quantify, price and weight, and you can have a good stab at quantifying aerodynamics and even stiffness to a certain extent, but a lot of this stuff is, is untangible, you know? And so it makes things, it makes it quite a tricky question, really. I don't know what the answer is, but I will say that just be careful when you're reading bike reviews. Don't just look to see whether something got four stars. You want to actually take time to read the review, find out if the reviewer has taken into account the potential influence of wheels and tires and taken the time to swap them out as well. Because whilst you might not want to buy a bike and then immediately feel the need to swap the tires out, the fact is if you're going to spend several thousand on a new rig, spending another hundred on a new pair of tires to unlock potential increased performance actually is both a drop in the ocean and also really significant at the same time. And not all bike reviews are created equally either, so bear that in mind too. Right, get involved in the comment section down below. I would love to know your thoughts on this. Do you feel that the way your bike rides is down to the component choices or is it hardwired into the frame itself?